do this one actually. We're not just gonna. Two inches. Yep. How many do we have here? Zero. One eighth of an inch. Yeah. We've got a one eighth inch overlap. So here's your first course. Here's the second course of drip inch. It's only overlapping one eighth of an inch right here. That's incorrect. In fact, they didn't have it over there. So here you could see they probably have about 16 inch overlap. <laughs> so that's not how you do that. <laughs> Starter shingle needed on the over here first again. Starter shingle goes under the first course. And this year again, you know, on top of the hedge. Those are underdriven nails. <laughs> those. I mean, those are, look at that nail. That one's crooked and is not doing any good. It actually tore the shingle. So it's improperly nailed. It's not going to seal down. This needs to be sealed in plastic cement to hold this other section down. This needs to be fixed. I mean, look, look, look at that. I mean, especially, look at here too. It was a new design method where they have a little hook on it for well, the wind to catch. Adam, I believe this is called the uh, hitchhiker roofing applique. <laughs> what that means is that you, someone that's hitchhiking, you give them a ride and you have them come and help you install the roof. <laughs> so let me explain what is happening here. Look at this, guys. So this here, um, yeah. now you can see that they did a beautiful cut curved edge. Um, that is not what you do. <laughs> this shingle should have been cut over here on this joint. You never overlap another shingle onto another course. It's never gonna sit down flat. I mean, there's a huge gap, especially with the applique here, the double thickness here in the dragon tooth. That's gonna hold that up at least an eighth inch. You're never gonna have this sealant touch down in any of this area. Yeah, that is not the right way to do it. So that needs to be trimmed. And actually, if you look up, um, if you record from here looking up, I'll show you two other areas where it's done like that. Looking up, look right here. What do we have right there? The same thing. Look right here. What do we have there? The same thing. That is an improper way to install shingles is basically the lazy way, which I don't really understand because if you cut this shingle, I mean, the shingle was cut. All you had to do is trim it a little more. So, I mean, the knife, it literally, if a couple seconds, you'll, you'll cut that really quick. They just refuse to do that. So that's never gonna seal down flat completely. They're actually not sitting flat. Same thing here, just right over it, barely an eighth of an inch, but that's enough to not let it seal. Now, if you record from that angle, if you take a few steps to your left and you actually look at these courses, look and tell me what you see. Well, we're seeing the fabric strip on these because the way they install these too high and the courses are crooked too. <laughs> Extremely crooked. Oh my goodness, would you go over there? Uh, show them the three inch. Oh my goodness, we've got, look over there. Let, let me walk over here, guys. We've got a three inch exposure over here. Yeah, this is horrible. So look at. I'll lift up so you can see exactly where that nail line is. This is the nail line here. This is where it should have been. Now, on a roof this small and this simple, there should be absolutely no reason why you need to have a three inch exposure when you should have about five and a half. This is crooked as can be, sir. Yeah. This beauty course is not beautiful. Plenty of room to do that. And this four by should have been, I would like to have seen this four by nailed better. Look at the gap over here. You've got a yeah, three quarter inch gap right here under this four foot by five should have been nailed or preferably actually screwed in. This would have been better to have screwed it in. Yeah, otherwise eventually it's just gonna be pulling up those nails and it's gonna be pushed up and you could have blown in snow and rain actually get inside of there. So that, that should be done, that needs to be done differently. And that one needs to be glued down also. This is never gonna seal right here. Look at that, that, that will never seal. No. This will never seal right here. The ridge cap that terminates into slope C right here and slope C on this inspection the project manager did not check a slope C over here. This is all loose over here. They have a nail that's uh, pulled out, overdriven. There's another nail right here above the valley that's right at the butt joint of the shingle right here. That's really bad. So this needs to be driven in and sealed, but these are loose right here. 
we actually need some more nails in this area. This is not properly nailed right here. So you need to have, come back over here, re-nail this in this area, and then need to put some asphalt cement in this area. Need to put on the first course of your ridge shingles on your underlying shingle needs to be a starter shingle rather than the plastic cement. These ridge cap shingles, they install the nails too high. We've got a nail here and a nail here, yeah, but they're installing this as though it's on a ridge vent. There's no reason to install the nails like this. The nails need to be here and another nail over here. This gable end right here actually terminates into a hip and as it terminates into the hip, this course of shingles right here, and where that's the overlying course of shingles over the underlying row of hip shingles or your ridge cap shingles on the hip, you always need to put plastic cement. We have a good amount of plastic cement in here. That's done well. It would be good because of the way they installed this shingle. If you look at this ridge cap, you look at the exposure, We've got about three and a half inches, five inches over here. Now look under here, your asphalt sealant on your glue, on your sealant strip is way back over here. We really should have some plastic cement right here. You can see right here, I have these little fern strips for the siding, but you can see the siding here, The this isn't protected at all. All right, you can look down here. This is where the hip actually terminates into another adjacent roof system. You can see how it was done here. It's cut out, nails exposed. You have some clear. You never want to use clear because what's going to happen is going to actually bunch up and actually hold this shingle up and not never allow it to seal. But you can see there's no sealing strips on this one here. So what you actually need to do is actually embed it in plastic cement. All right, same thing with any component. Whenever you have shingles terminating on a component flashing, it needs to be sealed in plastic cement. How much plastic cement do we need to put in there? I would put, you know, probably about a quarter size over each nail head uh, or even a dime size, just a nice little glob and it'll seal it back and up. And do we want to run some plastic cement underneath of this shingle? I would seal it here, but you got to be careful too. I would like to see it continue, actually start on the top because what you don't want to do is have a line here, water go over it. You know, you, you want to kind of more of a continuous line on there. And then look at what they did over here. They just put some clear sealant on top over here and we really don't we don't want that no you you don't need clear sealant but we don't want that we yeah. want a water trough right there you got ice and water over yeah there. ice and water should not be used and actually if you get the camera if you want to get it from this side jerry all right i'm uh, going to move around adam let's show them and go ahead and demonstrate and share what's going on here, here and what we don't you. like about this now ice and water we do not install in a component like this and here's the reason why you see all this debris right here now you can see I could lift up on that ice and water. What that means is it's not gonna seal down properly. The water could easily get in there, get trapped and work its way around there and actually cause a leak. You can see that nail's crooked. Look at this, this uh, crooked, this nail's driven, driven in and at, at an angle and it's only two inches from the butt of the shingle. Uh, we don't want that, that's way too close. That's a problem. Especially around a component that's gonna find its way in. So it be sealed up. Another one. Look at that. Could potentially leak inside by something It will, like and then the hard thing about that is that somebody's gonna come out here and think that this flashing's leaking, and they're gonna probably smear it in probably a gallon of tar. I've seen it done a hundred times. Another one, this one's actually overdriven. So that one's already gonna get beneath the shingle. So you see that nail head? And if I lay one shingle down, let me lay, lay one down. Now where is that gonna end up? And then even worse, look at this. Look at this, this shingle. One right here may leak right there. But look at the side of the shingle real quick. You see this glue strip here? Let me see, okay. That glue strip, now where's that nail at? When I lay this down, you know, basically water gets trapped in this little section. So it could actually collect a little water right above that nail head and definitely be leaking. All these nails need to be sealed in plastic cement because again, water gets in there, but it gets behind these shingles, comes down. If these aren't sealed up, those are just another entry point for water to get inside. Looks like a real nice turbine vent with no dings from hell in there. Maybe a handful. Okay, now roof shiners. Let me explain what they are and how to fix them the right way. Now roof shiners, when you have a nail, if you look here closely, 
is actually below the nail line. So that's gonna cause an issue. It's actually gonna start leaking. Now some people will actually take just your clear and put it over it, uh, but that's not the right way to do it. The best way to do it is if you take your, fl your flat bar and then you break this seal, you're gonna take it underneath and apply pressure and carefully remove that nail. They're gonna take your plastic cement you're going to force it under there on that hole and you're just going to push it down. It'll probably ooze out just a little of that plastic cement, but that'll properly seal that and fix it. And you won't even see it. And you put clear, you're going to see that from the ground. It's going to look horrible. If you look here, it appears that the shingle was actually removed. It's tore. Because it's tore right there completely and you get another tear here and you have another tear there. Without any plastic cement, that is definitely going to let all water get inside and leak. I mean, that shingle shouldn't have been used. The downspout on this project is completely clogged. The homeowner needs to be informed so they can clean those out. Here's some nails that were left over kindly by the roofer in the gutter over here. We have nails in different areas. And here's one of the coolest ever that I've ever seen over here for the bird stop. I mean, the you know, look at the bird stop and then what they did here in the front of the rake board where it terminates into the the roof slope right here don't know about this but that's really really cool not really that's uh unnecessary and unneeded all you need to do is get that shingle up under there here let's go look over here instead of the white side of the drip edge why not flip it around bend it and have the brown side showing but nevertheless, that bird stop is horrible. Here's the beauty strip. That's pretty ugly. And you can see a, a quarter inch separation right here. Above the beauty strip, we're one inch away from the top of the head wall. And it, it's the same way all the way down here to the right. You can see that again, I mean, two feet away from where the soffit and the roof line intersect that's the only nail we have over there so that shingle is going to flap in the wind and blow off that's no good reason to do that guys i mean with the bird stop all they have to do is invert that 90 degree and have the brown showing or the weathered bronze rather than the white and that's that's just horrible right there but that's a two by two and we really need a two by four over there not a two by two so Everybody, make sure you always have some project managers need to always make sure they have some two by four sticks with them or make sure they deliver a two by four stick to a job site. Now, let me show you this awesome several pieces of shingles. Look at this shingle. It is, uh, look at that. It is about a half inch lower, cockeyed, crooked. This other shingle overlapping this shingle, overlapping not budding together like they're supposed to do. It's overlapping again. We've got quite a few overlapping shingles on this roof. That This guy's never gonna seal down. By the way, this one's not nailed. This shingle's not nailed over here, guys. Lovely. Look at that. The shingle's not nailed. And over here, this is horrible over here with these shingles over here also. Got a lot of work that needs to be redone over here. Project manager must upload photos on a install like this when you have vertical wall abutment with deteriorated masonite siding as we have here it's going to leak into the wall and so especially with one by twos that are used to cover over the joints in those one by two separate it and there's gonna be some leaks here in the future with this deterioration once it rains pretty hard it's going to end up on the inside of the home on this on this roof inspection, we have a plastic cap right here in the drip edge. And then two feet over, we have another plastic cap right here. 